Linda Farkas from Faith Christian Church. Pastor Matthew J. Farkas from Faith Christian Church. We believe the Word of God is relevant today. If we say that the Bible is God talking to us, is it still relevant today? So we're here to answer questions concerning that. The name of the show is Say What? Say What? Welcome to Say What with Pastor Matthew and Brenda Farkas from Rockingham Faith Christian Church. Um, we welcome you today. We live in northern New England, southern Vermont. So today it's a sweater, but it's purple for spring <laughs> because we are finally almost to spring. Yeah. But um. Well, it is spring technically. Well, technically, yeah. yeah. Nobody told the Easter lilies yet, though. <laughs> so, um, anyways, since it's getting close to Easter. I wanted to do something along the lines, you know, it's a joke in our house because I'll say, hey, hon, it's Mother's Day. What's your sermon on? <laughs> and so we do sometimes get an Easter sermon, though. <laughs> but, um, but the show, I thought maybe we could, I thought maybe we could start out and yeah. talk about, you know, we a lot of times know Jesus as a great teacher. Mm -hmm. We know him as a great man. We know him as somebody that's anointed, mm -hmm. you know, in ministry. But he was a man. He was God in the flesh. He was a man anointed by the Holy Ghost when he was here on earth. You know, I yeah. have a thought on yeah, that. Yeah, go for it. Um, we might not have known who he was in the natural, and that's true. If you go back to his life, he was born into a small country setting, kind of a home, mm -hmm. a town that was very small mm -hmm. uh, outside of the... They were actually on traveling roads, like if you get on Route 70 going across the country or Route 80 or whatever, mm -hmm. and you want to pull off somewhere and you're in the Boones, and they say, Hotel Daniel Boone or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. you pull Wagon on Wagon wheel, you know, right. and you're well, traveling. Well, that was Nazareth. Yeah. Nazareth is a place you, you commerce people mm -hmm. uh, would travel and they would stop in at uh, Nazareth for the commendations. And so they would know. They would hear things because mm -hmm. people talk, you know, yep. you feed them, they talk, mm -hmm. and they're traveling between the cities and towns and villages, so they, mm -hmm. they would keep up with the news, what's going on in society. But as Jesus grew, no, he was, became known as a carpenter, and so uh, the town uh, knew him as Joseph's son or the carpenter's son, Mary, the son of Mary or whatever, and his four brothers and his sisters. But anyway, at age 30, he gets called of God. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, there was only one other time he experienced something that brought out his divinity, which was at age 12, we know. And, he was and that, it was interesting in that instance. He said, why are you so surprised to find me here? He was right. you know, in with the, the uh, important religious people talking right. scripture. He says, I'm about my father's business. And mm -hmm. Mary took note of that. Because she knew that, who his father was at that point. It was you're actually Joseph, following you know? my thought. Yeah. The only person who really recognized him or yeah. pondered it was Mary. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible specifically brings that out. Yeah. Uh, we know Joseph was still alive at that point because mm -hmm. him and her both yep. went to look for him. Right. And so anyway, it said he returned 18 more years. So Jesus had an Amber Alert. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's true. He was gone three days. Anyway. Um, and actually, the parents wanted to rebuke him, and he actually rebuked his parents. But anyway, um, at age 30, God calls him, and... He goes down, he gets baptized in the Holy Spirit, but nobody in the town, nobody in the synagogue, mm -hmm. nobody that he fellowshiped with as a boy or a young man knew who he was. Right. Um, he then gets anointed, the Holy Spirit comes on him without measure, mm -hmm. and we know that's the birth of Jesus, the mm -hmm. beginning of his ministry is, is Jesus Christ, or Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. And he begins to maneuver miracles, mm -hmm. teaching, preaching, and healing. But... When he comes to the cross, it's very interesting. Um, it said that he came to his own and they rejected him. Mm -hmm. uh, one denied him, right. one betrayed him, mm -hmm. and the other ten got offended and fled. Right. So here he is, he's all alone. But mm -hmm. what we have really never majored on was back in Genesis 3.15, when Adam and Eve sinned, mm -hmm. and God, uh, God came in the garden and said, Adam, where are you? And he's looking right at him, mm -hmm. and Adam thinks he's hidden among the trees. And so sometimes we think we're bigger than God. 
and smarter than God, and uh, he's waiting on his Fast response. Fast forward to 21st century. I see that as those heat sensors, like the military had God sitting there, and it's going zzz, zzz. <laughs> he knows what he's And he, he says, where are you, Adam? Mm -hmm. And he waits for his response, and finally Adam responds. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then he says something, and God said, who told you we're naked? Yeah. And there's a lot of theology into that. And then we come down, and then he... He asked Adam, Adam blames Eve, Eve blames mm -hmm. the serpent. So he talks to the serpent in Genesis 3.15 and says there's coming a seed mm -hmm. uh, of a woman, not a yeah. man. All yeah. seed is passed on through the male. Yeah. Uh, and the word in Greek is sper sperma. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it sperm. Right. And God, that's the word seed. Mm -hmm. uh, when we say you receive the seed of God, it says you receive the sperma of God. Mm -hmm. And Which so, is why we like to teach that you, you actually have the life of God inside of you. Yeah, in your spirit, God, though. God's in DNA your spirit. in your spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and we haven't really dominated on that. It's right. called Zoe. Yeah. It, it's called the life of God, the mm -hmm. divine nature of God. Um, and it has in it a set uh, a sealment of anointing. Mm -hmm. um, it has the power and wisdom so of then God when in you, it. So since you're going there, can I ask you this question? Mm -hmm. Do we inherently have the nature of God then when we're born of the Spirit? Yes, Yes, you, you get inherited. Well, you're, what happens if we're not acting like it? You're adopted into the seed. You're so adopted I have in. his nature, but I'm not acting like it. So what's with that? It's dormant? It's dormant till you activate it, right. Okay. But let me get to back to the point. We'll get back well, to that. Sometime we'll get back to where I wanted to start. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> my whole point of that yeah. was there were, in the realm of the Spirit, when that anointing came on Jesus yeah. at age 30, mm -hmm. it brought the attention to that serpent, mm -hmm. that old dragon, Satan, that yeah. since Genesis 3.15, he has been looking for this seed. Right. And he knows that the seed of God contains the wisdom and power, which mm -hmm. is Christ, which is the anointing. Yep. And so he knows he's looking for that when he sees it sealed on mm -hmm. Jesus. Because mm -hmm. jo jo God said to John the Baptist, he said, when you see this Holy Spirit come down mm -hmm. and remain, be sealed mm -hmm. on Jesus in a sense, but just remain. Mm -hmm. uh, Sealman is in their spirit. Remain on because it's about to the Holy Spirit. But he said, on whom you see him remain, that's the lamb. Mm -hmm. And so if God let John the Baptist know that, it was mm -hmm. then released. Right. Satan knew then this might be the Christ. Right. This might mm -hmm. be that seed. Right. And so we come, when you think of the story of Jesus, what's interesting to me is he knew who he was. Mm -hmm. And the enemy knew who he was. But we really didn't. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And in culture today, we still don't know who right. he really is. I thought but it's was... interesting to me that the spirit realm didn't know who he was. Right. And that's who he came for. He came to redeem sin. Mm -hmm. He came to aim to redeem sickness and disease. He came to redeem us from separation of God, and that mm -hmm. was his purpose. Yeah. But it's interesting to me that natural realm didn't even recognize who he was. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to come. It behooved him to come yeah. to experience this life. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know why, how we lived mm -hmm. and why we would walk away from him. Those are two of my what would drive us away from a creator that created you? Yeah. What would drive you away from a father that birthed you? What would cause you to run from the people that love you? Mm -hmm. And he wanted to know that. It says in Hebrews that behooved him. Yeah, I was going to say, inner, those are the two scriptures that I really like. In the God. inner midst of his being. He, he walked you know? like we walked so he mm -hmm. can help us. Right. And that was the uniqueness yeah. of that. But we didn't recognize that. Mm -hmm. But he did it for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, the reason why it is laying dormant inside mm -hmm. you is because it's a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. All of our life up to that moment, you're born of the spirit. Born of the spirit, you're spiritually separated from the mm -hmm. realm of the spirit. Yeah, you are a spirit. You're right. eternal. Right. But you're separated from the one that created you, the one that dreamed about you, the one that purposed you, the mm -hmm. one that willed you, mm -hmm. the one that wanted to be involved with your life. Mm -hmm. He willed that. Mm -hmm. But up to that point, you're living by your soul, mm -hmm. through your senses. Mm -hmm. You're living by the knowledge of good and evil, the desire of your flesh, the desire of your mm -hmm. mind, and the pride of life. Yeah. And we have that going on in the world right now with the opiate uh, thing, the gun laws. Mm -hmm. uh, this is all coming into that pride of life thing. Mm -hmm. you, just, you, you just see that knowledge cycling everywhere, it, mm -hmm. it, it, and, it's, and it's backed by the God of this world, mm -hmm. which is Satan when he stole it from Adam and Eve. But my point of that is when you're born again, it's in your spirit. Mm -hmm. You have to learn now to take that out of your spirit, mm -hmm. renew your mind, and then begin to walk it out in right. the flesh. And it's a process. It's yeah. called sanctification. Okay. Um, where I wanted to start was the mm -hmm. fact that 
Jesus was here as a man. And we're very, we're very, um, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Sometimes we like to look at him as a man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we like to look at him as God. So we're selective. We're mm -hmm. selective according to what we need to see when we're doing it or what need to direct somebody to. But what I wanted to see him as, as a man ready to do the will of God. Mm -hmm. Because in the garden, he had an experience with God. It's where his humanity and divinity came like this. Mm -hmm. And he had a real big struggle. Mm -hmm. And he actually wanted somebody to walk with him in the struggle, people that he had poured his life into. And they left right. him in that struggle. But God ordained that struggle mm -hmm. to be just him. It's almost like when Jacob wrestled with God, mm -hmm. with the angel, you know. Mm -hmm. It's almost like that. Right. And um, so all of our times. Moses out in the Lord. Yeah. You had a sermon mm -hmm. last year that I Joshua really liked. Rest to rest. W-R-E-S-T. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. wrestle with God until we can rest. We want the rest that we can get in God, but we forget that we have to wrestle a little bit to get to the rest. And when we're wrestling, we're always not too sure if it's God right. or the devil doing all the stuff, you know. And um, so I wanted you to take me to that garden because I love how when you studied it out, mm -hmm. even in the Greek, you brought out, you know, we just so tritely say these scriptures, or we only visit them right. certain seasons of the year or certain right, months the of reason, the year. The, this is interesting right. to me. This is God right. as human being and as God. Right. What, why I brought that out is because yeah. in John 11, you begin to pick up the, the political realm and the religious realm mm -hmm. blended together. They yeah. both hated him. Yeah. And the reason they hated him is he was becoming popular. Right. He was become a populist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason he was, was not who he was. He was mm -hmm. very lowly in heart, humble, mm -hmm. yep. meek. His mom in his first miracle said, Get out, Get out there, boy. That's who you are. <laughs> yeah. And he said, Woman, it's not my time yet. And he ended up mm -hmm. doing it. So anyway. Um, so in the, in the humanity of him, he might have been a behind-the-scenes person. Very behind-the-scenes. Comfortable scenes. Very with comfortable with himself. With probably yeah. a loner. Yeah. I, I don't mean weird loan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. was a thinker. Yeah. Liked to be by yeah. himself. And he was communal. He loved, mm -hmm. his, he yeah. loved the synagogue. He'd go every sa Sabbath, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And he, he loved the people. But mm -hmm. he was a carpenter. He probably talked to the people he, he mm -hmm. worked for. But I'm talking about loner in the sense of he didn't get involved with what was going on, probably at the local tavern or... The dance hall or the movie club he he, he had a driven purpose in his life mm -hmm. and i think he protected that he mm -hmm. kind of understood who he was mm -hmm. and he knew that he had a, a purpose a vision a, a part play but anyway um the political realm and the religious realm get together and they said man if we don't stop this guy we're going to mm -hmm. lose our seats we're going to mm -hmm. lose our power we're mm -hmm. going to lose our money yeah we're going to lose our prestige Mm -hmm. uh, because Jesus says the the Pharisees and the Sadducees they love the chief seats their and they like to were, be greeted in the marketplace. Yeah. Their thoughts were, they like oh to my, have their prayers heard. Yeah. You know? Their thoughts were, oh my goodness, the people like him. What are we going to do? <laughs> but so all those people were yeah. turning to Jesus yeah. because they saw that. The, 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 and those people the, were only good for taxes and forgiveness prayers. Right. I mean, they, well, they, they controlled they controlled just like from Washington. Yeah, they controlled yeah. how the people thought, what they mm -hmm. could do, what they couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. It's never yeah. changed. Yeah. They were under the Roman Empire. They were under mm -hmm. the Roman law. And it's set up a lot like ours in the Senate. They had a mm -hmm. Senate and they had a, a king. We have a president. I mean, it was a lot mm -hmm. of like. And then that they would issue out the laws and then they would implement them throughout the towns and cities. But anyway. Uh, Jew, the, the Jerusalem was set at that point was on their own mm -hmm. because of God and so their the Jews faith. were a culture within the Roman Catholic. As long as they paid their as taxes as paid. and didn't have a riot. They so could here do, we are. They could do their that's own the, thing. That's the setting. And they didn't want the Romans to come in and completely mm -hmm. take them over. That's yeah. where they're at. Yeah. So here's all these people flooding and they and what Caesar feared the most, mm -hmm. he would even kill his own son. He'd kill mm -hmm. his own mother. Mm -hmm. If he thought he'd lose that seat, mm -hmm. I mean, and so when they said when when they said to Pilate, "Are you a friend of Caesar?" Yeah, that was like saying, "Are you are you betraying Caesar? Are you are you you have a knife in his back? Are you are mm -hmm. you taking? Are you saying you're Caesar?" Mm -hmm. And that's when Pilate gave in. Up to that point, he said, "Man, this th this man's holy. I, I wash my hands of him. Right. I, I'm right. not dealing with this guy. My wife's having bad dreams. She's telling me not to do it, and mm -hmm. you're telling me to do it." And he go back in. He said, "Tell me, 
Are you the truth? Are, are you are mm -hmm. you the son of God? Let are, me off are, the are hook. You, are, who are you? <laughs> Tell me something. Yeah. You know, and Jesus stayed silent. He'd say, well, you say that I am. Mm -hmm. I guess I am, mm -hmm. you know. And he did say something to Pilate. He said, I am truth, mm -hmm. you know. And Pilate said, well, what is truth, you know. So, so but anyway, I want to go to the garden. All right, so the political realm mm -hmm. is wanting to kill him. Mm -hmm. So what happens is inside of Jesus' is 12, yep. He goes in, he raises the Lazarus from the dead, mm -hmm. and he comes in, and all the people now are really pushing to see Jesus mm -hmm. they, and, and Lazarus that he raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. I, they got to see this. They heard about it. He was dead four days. Yeah. It's, it's spreading even into the Gentile right. nations. And so the G, G, Gentiles are even seeking him. Mm -hmm. And so he goes in the house of Lazarus. He sits down, and one of his sisters breaks a bottle of perfume, wipes pours it on his feet and body mm -hmm. and wipes it off with her hair. He's, she's anointing him for death. Mm -hmm. No one in the room understood that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if she understood right. that. And the, one of his disciples said, you know what? This is it. Mm -hmm. that, that's a whole year's wage. We could have gave that to the poor. Mm -hmm. And really, Jesus, and the Bible goes on, says he was a thief and he held the bag. Mm -hmm. So you see the conflict of going on in Judas. Mm -hmm. And Judas then at that point made his final decision that he was going to betray Jesus. So mm -hmm. he goes and meets with the political party. Right. So at this, right at that moment, Jesus goes into an incredible sorrow. He goes into a anxiety. He goes into to stress. He goes into a mind a mind place that he never been in his whole life. He, Jesus the man. Jesus the man. He's mm -hmm. absolutely, the Bible says he was sorrowful unto death. He was mm -hmm. in agony. It was said that his sweat became drops of blood. Mm -hmm. You have to see that this, the, the son, God in the flesh, as a man, mm -hmm. did not want to die. And, he, and that's my, that's and my thought. so much so under he pressure. Was, he was born, here's a man. He was born mm -hmm. to die. Yeah. In a sense. He, wasn't, he was born a different kind right. of birth, but he was born to die. So as soon as he was born, he was already knowing that he was going to die. Right. But while he was alive, he did right. nothing but make life. I mean, you know what right. I'm saying? He restored he, life. He restored. He healed. Yeah. So all sickness, he raised all sickness, people all from the dead. dead. He raised people from the dead. He, and in that, just a, yeah. this will be a ticker, just a quickie, is he only raised young people. There's never an older really? person who was raised. But anyway, I searched that out, and I can't, mm -hmm. I agree with that thought. But anyway. The crowds were rushing to him, and when the Gentiles came, that's when Jesus knew. That it was he he said this, I am the seed. Mm -hmm. The seed that was prophesied. He doesn't say that in John, but we, mm -hmm. he, I just said that in Genesis right. 3. He understood that. He right. understood the Messianic prophecy of that. Mm -hmm. He said, I am the seed. I must fall right. into the ground. If a seed does not fall into the ground, it will not produce no fruit. Mm -hmm. So he understood that his death was going to produce right. Fruit, right? And that's why I said, when you're born again, you're not the very seed of God. Mm -hmm. You're adopted out of that seed. God mm -hmm. places a part of that seed mm -hmm. that was in flesh yeah. into your spirit. So each one of us makes up the body of Christ. Yeah. Each one of us makes up the humanity of Jesus. I don't want to get off on that part, but we make up that body of anointing that was in and on Him. But anyway, the people began to seek Him, and Jesus at that moment goes into an incredible vexed vexated, anxiety, stressed mm -hmm. out, thought life. And at the same time, he knows one's going to betray him. And he goes to him, washes his feet. Think mm -hmm. about this. He takes the feet of the person that's going to kill him, betray him, to be murdered, to mm -hmm. be put on the cross, to be crucified. He's, he takes a towel, wraps it around his waist. It was the most menial job that you could do. It was given to the mm -hmm. least of least of servants. He brings himself to the lowest place man could come, wipes Judas's feet with mm -hmm. this mind game going on, mm -hmm. raging inside of him. And then he doesn't repent. Mm -hmm. Then he takes sop, which is a form of covenant. Mm -hmm. We call it Eucharist. We call it the Lord's Supper. Some people yeah. call it um, the Lord's Supper. What's the other one? Uh, Eucharist or something else. Communion. Mm -hmm. And so he takes the sop, he dips it in, and he, when he puts it in... Judas's mouth, what he's saying to him is, you're my friend. I'm covenanting. I'm cutting blood with you. Everything mm -hmm. that I have, you have. Everything I can do, you can do. And so Jesus, again, gives him a second chance. And Judas, has, in his heart, made up his mind. And it says in the Bible, he says, well, since you won't repent, mm -hmm. this is reading between the lines, he says this, though, go do quickly what you must mm -hmm. do. At that point, Satan enters into into Judas, and he goes to be with the political party. But that whole scenario, Jesus is in this incredible mind game going on between life and death. Right. And then he goes into the garden, all mm -hmm. right? 
And that drove him into prayer mm -hmm. because he, he's going through this tremendous stress. He's going through this incredible anxiety. He knows he's asked something he doesn't want to do. And he's a human just like you and I. Mm -hmm. And he's fighting with every fiber of his being. And he, sa he takes the three men that he trusted the most, John, James, and Peter. Mm -hmm. And he comes and he, and he goes, to, comes and says, pray with me for an hour. Just pray with me for an hour that I can break this. I need to find God in this. I need, I need peace in this. Mm -hmm. It says that he could only go through to a stone throw, whatever that is. Matters who's throwing it. <laughs> someone who don't know how to throw or someone can throw. I mean, that would be pretty far. But he goes a stone throw, mm -hmm. and he falls on his face because of the stress that's going on inside of him. I don't think we've ever seen that part of Jesus, that he's struggling with every fiber of his being mm -hmm. to do the will of God. It, and the Bible says he was obedient to death, but it wasn't that smooth. So he ride. actually, in all the things that he was tempted of, like as we are, right. he was tempted to not do the will of God. To walk because away. Because he said, oh my goodness, this is too hard. I don't right. want to do this. How many mm -hmm. times have you gotten to that time in your life where you said, I don't know, God, this is just too hard. Yeah. What are you asking me to do? I don't think I want to do this. Right. So Jesus did that, and he provides through this process mm -hmm. a mercy seat, a, a throne that we can go to. But finish right. your thought. Well, and then what he does is, what he does is he, in that first prayer, mm -hmm. he commands, he commands that that cup will pass away. What that means in the Greek is he commands, it's an imperative in the Greek, mm -hmm. he literally commands that that cup would not happen. In other words, I don't want to die. Let it pass away. If, if I do sacrifice myself, I do become the seed, mm -hmm. I don't want to do it through that process. So there you go. I, I, want that, I want death to go over me. I don't want it to hurt me. I don't so, want it to harm me. So in the King James it says, Oh, my father... Mm -hmm. If it be possible, mm -hmm. let this cup pass okay. from me. Nevertheless, okay. not as I will. Let but me as explain I what will. this is. That that's a subjunctive. Because of the word if. If. Okay. He, it's condition. He understood mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But he goes and he commands out of his stress. He let can, this. He said, "Let it be." Yeah. So let there's it two be. two let dynamics. This cup be taken. So there's be. two let dynamics be. going on here. Right. There is a man saying, "Okay, God." If I'm, it's possible, right. can we do it another way? He understands that this is what who he is, right? But he's struggling with it, so he's, he makes it a condition. God, so, if if possible, yeah. then he commands what he wants. He, right. A lot of times we say we don't command God, and I understand that. But every time when I see faith spoken yeah. boldly, it's a command, it's and, like I, a, it's, and it's like it's kind of weird, you know, because yeah. you don't command a superior. You can't. Mm -hmm. it's, it, in the Greek in Greek culture, you did not command a superior. Mm -hmm. You could only come as high as a personal request. Please, okay. please, please, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so it's interesting when you see that Jesus mm -hmm. is the inferior here to mm -hmm. God, the superior because yeah. he's a man yeah. He took on flesh. He says, let it be. He commands this mm -hmm. cup. So you see his anguish. You see, you his see that. struggle. Yeah, you see the yeah. struggle in that. He, he's just blaring it out. Man, yeah, he, he's venting. Yeah, he, yeah he's releasing <laughs> it, you yeah. know. Yeah. But, he's, but in it, he, he's giving us his heart. Right. He said, I don't want to die. I don't want this cup to come to pass. I don't want to do this. I, I don't think this is all right with me. I don't, right. I don't, I'm not I've been a man agreement. for 33 years now, and, and this is not how I want to go And out. I'm enjoying <laughs> what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as much as heck if he was in, yeah. he still loved life. He was right. God. He was, he, was, he was life. He was light. He was Zoe. Mm -hmm. But anyway, at the end of the prayer, he says, not my will, but thine be done. So and there's very, three. So there's he goes, three. it finishes the condition. Stop right there. There's three. There's if... Mm -hmm. May, right. and then nevertheless, right. that's when he's like, okay, God. Right. He's, he's totally processed it through. Right. When it's a single subjunctive mm -hmm. and it's an exhortation, it's mm -hmm. almost a command. Yeah. And so that's why I take it to the command there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you go down to the next prayer. He comes back and he finds his disciples sleeping. Mm -hmm. And he and he kind of and first he gets angry at them. He gets yeah. well, I don't know so much as angry as frustrated. You oh, understand? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he healed he Peter. Yeah. He, 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 he healed asked Peter's them mother. To do that with him, yeah. He took Peter. He gave him a couple mm -hmm. boatloads of fish. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was good to Peter. He took everywhere Jesus right. went. Peter was allowed to come, mm -hmm. and all he ever asked in back from him was, "Could yeah. you not pray with me for right. an hour?" And he let him down. Mm -hmm. And and yep, you see the humanity still Jesus there. Mm -hmm. He gets a little disappointed in them. Right. He said, "Could you not just?" <laughs> 
What's up? Me for What's an up hour? with yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. He, he gets angry. But <laughs> yeah. he restores that though after the second hour, and I find that mm -hmm. to be neat because he's still frustrated. He's still mm -hmm. fighting. He's still holding on to who he is, mm -hmm. but he understands that it's God's will. So he goes in the second mm -hmm. hour of prayer, mm -hmm. and in there you notice that the command now becomes, "Let Thy will be done." So let me read it, please. Right. He says, and he says, he went away again right. the second time and prayed saying, Oh my father, if this cup may not pass away right. from me, except I right. drink it, mm -hmm. then thy will be done. Let thy will be done. He yeah. commands thou that, he commands let thy will mm -hmm. be done. And mm -hmm. he commands that. And I might have been wrong on an imperative. It might be the subjunctive with first person. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna check into that. But anyway, the command though it's still equal to a command. He commands mm -hmm. that let your will be done. So right there, what you saw in your studies, instead of him as a man saying, I don't want to do it this way, let's do it another way, mm -hmm. he says, instead of saying... Um, Notice up there, thy yeah. will be done, not my will, yours. Let this cup pass either. from me. Mm -hmm. Now he goes to, if it may not pass from me, then I'll have your will be done. Right. So he changes, he changes the emphasis of, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Plan to, I'll do the plan. He, right. uh, I'm trying. I know what I'm trying to say, but I'm not and, saying. And you it said right it good. Yeah. He he finally settles in himself that he's yeah. going to do the will of God. Yeah. No matter what it is, even if he doesn't mm -hmm. understand it, even if he's not in agreement with it, but his spirit now is mm -hmm. willing, willing and obedient to go. So to the if cross. it can't pass away from me, right? Then then let's do it. Right. If this yeah. is the way it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be, and I accept that mm -hmm. now. Then he comes back and mm -hmm. he restores with the disciples there. And he goes mm -hmm. back the third time and prayed. Now, this is just me saying this. It's not the Word of God, okay? Mm -hmm. I believe in this third prayer, he sees Isaiah 53, mm -hmm. the very couple last verses in that chapter, mm -hmm. and I believe he, it, the result of it is Hebrews chapter 12 too. Yeah. I believe in that prayer, God shows him the fruit of his seed. He shows his soul the multitude of people over the generations that are going to believe in what mm. he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And I think he did not see that to after he had the first, mm -hmm. the anxiety going on. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all about, it's all going on in Jesus. I mean, mm -hmm. and think about that. He's wiping the man's feet that's going to betray him with his mind game going on. Do you understand yeah. that? He yeah. keeps us cool. He mm -hmm. tells them to love one another, to serve one another, do what I've done unto you, do to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, what an incredible touch of love that mm -hmm. I mean there's the God kind of love man mm -hmm. then he takes sup and puts it in his mouth as a covenant term as a covenant calls thing, him friend and calls him friend mm -hmm. well when he comes back you mm -hmm. see the covenant ending yeah. of that covenant he says friend where have you been mm -hmm. but anyway in that third third prayer I really believe that God shows him the purpose of why he's going into the into sin laying on him mm -hmm. going into hell being resurrected he sees the fruit of that seed. He sees, I believe, the multitude of spirit beings that are gonna gonna because it says he goes to to the cross joy. Mm -hmm. It says in Hebrews chapter twelve too, yeah. uh, uh, to do the cross. So and joy there is a strength. It's not going ha 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 ha. I'm going to right. the cross. Weepy. That's right. not joy. It's an inner strength. It 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 it's it's of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and, and it's a joy. It's an inner strength, knowing that he's doing the will of God, he's willing and obedient to do it, and he says, okay, boys, get up, go ahead, so go sleep. Whole, he says, go ahead and sleep. So his whole, the off, his right whole the time of, of hours with that Gethsemane prayer was, mm -hmm. was a whole battle, spirit, soul, and Abs body. Absolutely. His whole being was involved. Absolutely. And so, you know, sometimes things can distress us so much in our life that it actually feels like we're being consumed right spirit, soul, and body, you know, it just feels like there's just, you just don't see the end of that. There's things no come, light. Right. Things come to our lives that absolutely yeah. shock us. And he says here, yeah. then after he, after he wrestled with that, came into the rest that he needed yeah. and that peace and that, and that saw that joy of the end of it. He said, sleep on now, take your rest. He wasn't even, he wasn't even sweating the fact that they just weren't going through this with them. They right. just weren't on the same page. He said, sleep on now, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. They rise. Let's be going. Behold, it, he's at the hand that does betray me. He's, it's the it's boom right, right there. Right. As, as and again, that rise he, is the yeah. imperative. Rise, yeah. he commands. As soon them. as he, as soon as he allowed himself to to say, 
or to submit to that, mm -hmm. to resign himself to that, mm -hmm. it's, it was boom, right there, mm -hmm. you know? And then it just moved. The events just moved after that. Yeah. But you never again see him in that anguish after that. No. The, the, the events got worse, you know. Yeah. First it's, oh, this guy's going to betray me, and I loved him, and I put him, and these people right. are going to be offended. They're going to deny me. They can't even right. pray with me, good grief. But it gets right. worse, but you don't see that level of frustration. Right. One of the things they did in Roman even. law, they were not allowed to have court at night. Mm -hmm. It was set up like ours. So they, fit, they, they came up with a false court yeah. uh, session. Yeah. Then they found false witnesses. Mm -hmm. And then after they accused him, uh, they rip out his beard, they, they spit on him, they beat him with rods. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. And it, the scenario goes, it just goes to worse, to worse, to worse. And mm -hmm. eventually he's hung on the cross. But anyway, like you said, it's awesome because in the whole way, he, that inner strength in him carried him. Because I believe in that third hour, he saw the vision, the purpose. I'm finding that Jesus had God moments in his yeah. life. Um, mm -hmm. I could be wrong about this. Another time that I saw, the very first time I saw is when Jesus was rebuking the towns and cities for not mm -hmm. receiving his anointing and rejecting it mm -hmm. in a sense, you know, rejecting him. Mm -hmm. And he's rebuking them and all of a sudden it says he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then he says, it changes the whole course of his conversation because mm -hmm. I believe right there he had a, it says in the Greek that he was filled with a rejoicing mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. Right. There's a drunkenness of the spirit. There's a place of rejoicing in the spirit. There's a place that's more liberating mm -hmm. than even the narcotics and wine and alcohol, it says mm -hmm. in the Bible, there, because it's a spiritual experience, not a natural experience, because the spirit will take over the soul and the body. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he, he got into that exalt of, of, of uh, um, emotion of the Holy Ghost, if mm -hmm. you want to say, and he had a God time moment. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, he saw the purpose of the church. Yep. Here he sees the purpose of his ending of his life, yep. and bringing in that harvest, bringing mm -hmm. in bringing in the church yep. to bring in that harvest that he saw so, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Exactly. Okay, so we're in Matthew 26, and I just want to go through a little bit. Verse 47, and while he was yet speaking, lo, Judas, and and the Bible goes, one of the twelve. Like you yeah, know, right. I know that. Right. <laughs> I've been following the story. One of them, one of the twelve came. And with him a great multitude mm -hmm. with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. So now we have a whole company of people, but they're not the same, you know, with not mm -hmm. the same intent that they had when he gathered to heal and preach I and love teach. this portion of scripture. Now he that betrayed him. All four him, bring him up. Yeah. Now he that up. betrayed him gave him a sign saying, whomsoever I shall kiss that. It, the same is hold him fast. Mm -hmm. So that's what Judas already right. made out with the people. So forthwith he came to Jesus. I, sometimes I like King James. And forthwith he came. <laughs> he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, I love this. Jesus looks at him. I mean, Jesus looks at him. He knows everything. He looks at him and he says, Friend, what did you come for? And that had to have pierced Judas right, right there. That had to have pierced him. Right. Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword. And we know that was who? <laughs> Peter. And, and this is what I was meant a moment ago. This is yeah. in all four Gospels. Yeah. And that's unique for yeah. itself. So that means God definitely wanted this wanted testified to in, in, yeah. on, in Easter time. Mm -hmm. So what is he telling us here? To me, it shows me that Jesus is so restored to do the will of God. Mm -hmm. That that sorrow of heart, that mm -hmm. agony it's of his, his vexation, in a sense, yeah. Yeah, it's all gone. Yeah. He's so much in the strength of God, he, mm -hmm. he puts yeah. the ear back on and heals him. Yeah. He and, says, and it's yeah. just amazing he to says, me. He's, and behold, yeah. one of them which was with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck mm -hmm. a servant Peter of the high was. priest and mm -hmm. smoke off his head. And it was Peter. Peter, the same one that was going to deny him, the same one that set up here before the Garden of Gethsemane. Though I would die with you, right. Jesus, I would die with you. I'd go to the cross. And, even, yeah. and Jesus will know before the cock does three times right. you're, you're you're gonna you know do that Denial so three times. so there you go and so he says um he he puts the ear back on then jesus says unto them him put again your sword into your place for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword thinkest you not that i well whatever i'm going to say it this way don't you know that i i prayed to my father and he i could pray to my father and he'd give me legions of angels right. to deliver me right. so he says 
This is done so that the scriptures will be fulfilled. I believe that third hour of prayer was an incredible time yeah. for Jesus. I think the angels were right there saying, come on, God, can we come help him? Come I, on. I believe he saw a lot at that moment. Yeah. And that's, again, that's not scriptural, yeah. but it doesn't tell you what's the third. Yeah. I think that was a personal time between him and God. And can you imagine, yeah. can you imagine the angels? Because they third of them got kicked out with Lucifer. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine them sitting there with God the Father and they're watching the Father do that to his son? You know, sometimes when we discipline our kids, it, you know, we tell them it hurts us and they don't believe us. But can you see God saying no to the angels? No, no, guys, this is how it's going to go down. We all knew this, right. you know, and the angels are like, man, just send us and we'll help them. You know, God, this is your son. Good grief. You know, and he's like, no, no, this is, the, you know, the whole thing play by play went out just as it was foretold, right. just as it was prophesied. Yeah. And so Jesus says, he calls their attention to that. And he says, now shall the scriptures be fulfilled. And he's talking about Isaiah 53, seven mm -hmm. to 10. He's talking about Lamentations right. chapter four. He's referring back to that. And uh, he says, no, this is fulfilling scripture. And in that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, are you come out against me like a thief? Are you saying that it's almost as if I'm a, I'm a thief, the way mm -hmm. you're coming and approaching me? He says, couldn't you have come and got me any time? I was among you. I walked mm -hmm. among you. I healed your sick. I was with you. Right. You could have come at any time and took me. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do it this way? He, he was opening, you know, he was giving them a reality check, you know. Mm -hmm. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And, and that, it says that, and then it says, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. In the same verse, in the same sentence, it says, mm -hmm. then all the disciples forsook him and fled. I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, you know. And if, it, if he was in the same emotion that he had been in the garden, that would have been devastating. Right. But here he's like, yep, there they go, <laughs> you know. Right, he understood all that. Yep. And again, that's a different type of writing. That's a, that's a lot of historical yeah. put in emotion there. And then they led him away to the mock trial that you said. Right, because it's a historical book. Yeah. So it's putting time, Yeah. You know, moving time along there. Moving you, it along. Yeah, yeah, you can read between the lines there. but. Yeah. And so <clears> then you go again, and then in the next, at the end of that chapter, you see the fulfillment of what Peter did. Right. You know, with, mm -hmm. as the um, trial goes on and as the, you know, we move towards the crucifixion. Right. And how did Peter feel, you know? And it's interesting to yeah. I me, mean, Jesus was only a, uh, a carpenter. Yep. In his first 30 years of his life, in the last three and a half years, he went from the common folk yep. to in front of the Jewish temple mm -hmm. before the governor of the region mm -hmm. and then the ruler of the land. Yep. And, uh, just in three and a half years. Mm. That's an amazing thing. He testified to the common folk. Mm -hmm. He testified to the religious world. Yeah. And he testified to the political world. Yeah. God witnessed to all our realms that we have yeah. still in our society. Yeah. And he showed them who he was. And he, had, and he showed him the divine nature of God, the character of God. Yeah. And, and, and in that, anybody in any of those realms can come to him at any time, like you said, and find mercy in yeah. time of need. Because you know? I thought it was interesting further down in the story, when it comes to another garden, where they're going to bury him, it's Nicodemus. I just saw something. Is there? He had yeah. a chance for the governor, mm -hmm. and the, the religious world could have released him, mm -hmm. because Pilate comes out and says, okay, you have a custom. Mm -hmm. Let me give you G Jesus, or this uh, Barbarius, or whatever yeah. his name was, Barabbas, I Barabbas, think, Barabbas. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, give us Barabbas, give us yeah. Barabbas. And they said, what about Jesus? Crucify him, yeah. crucify yeah. And the crowd, it's called a bandwagon argument. They all get in it, crucify yeah. him. Yeah. I believe there's people in the crowd didn't even know what they were saying. Yeah, they were just there. Yeah. And then he's taken before mm -hmm. Pilate, and Pilate gets to examine him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the power to change anything, but mm -hmm. he could. So he gets a brainstorm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send it to the man that can make a decision right. politically. Mm -hmm to change this man's right. path. Right. He goes politically and they mock him. Mm -hmm. He says, show me a miracle. Mm -hmm. Give me a miracle. Yeah. I'll, let, I'll let you go if you give me a miracle. Yeah. And Jesus didn't come to prove who he was. He right. came to take our sin. And right. so came to love us. And so anyway, he, he says, well, and that's where they dressed him as a king and, mm -hmm. and they beat him mm -hmm. and sent him back. Yeah. And, uh, Pilate sent him out to get 30, uh, 39 stripes or whatever it is. But all three realms had an opportunity to back him, and all three gave, rejected him. Mm -hmm. and, 
And that was God in the flesh. And how about this? Being nailed to a cross as a carpenter. <laughs> how about that? You but know? the most, most famous thing yeah. then, if you think about all that, you go, mm -hmm. he's on the cross, and he says, Father, forgive them for the, they mm -hmm. do not know what they have done. Yeah. And, and you think about that. He's saying that to the common people. Mm -hmm. He's saying that to the political people, and he's saying that to the religious realm. Mm -hmm. No matter what realm you walk in mm -hmm. or live in or, or, or born into yeah. in some cultures, they're still him. Mm -hmm. Jesus is there for any one of us. You know how many powerful we are or small we are. Mm -hmm. The Bible says from the least to the greatest can know the, the Lord thy God, you know, mm -hmm. and that's over in Hebrews where it talks about a redemption. And it said, not only he forgive us of all our sins, but he remembers them no more. But he said, everyone will know him from the greatest to the least. And if he had not submitted to God way back in mm -hmm. the garden, right. right there, the other garden, we lost our dominion and authority, the right. garden of Eden. Right. We lost it. Here, he submits in the garden of Gethsemane. And I believe that's a restorational And, and guess teaching, what he right? gives? Mm -hmm. Guess what he gives back to us with his death, burial, and resurrection and ascension? All of those together... He restores what we lost in Genesis 3.15. Right. He, and he had to submit to God in seemingly total weakness. He had to submit to God to be raised to be an authority. He's the king of all, all right. kings. He's Every, the Lord of lords. That's a good point. We have like yep. four minutes. Yep. In Genesis 3.15, that's mm -hmm. awesome that you said that. Because yep. at first it said, "My, I'm going to bring a seed of a woman. Mm -hmm. He's going to bruise your head. Mm -hmm. and But you're going to bruise his heel. Yep. If, you, if you reverse that like he did... Adam blamed Eve, Eve mm -hmm. blamed Satan. Mm -hmm. He he judged Satan, then he judged Eve, yeah. Eve and then he judged yeah. Adam. So let's look at that verse going up. Mm -hmm. He bruised. Yeah. The seed came, but he bruised the hill of Jesus. He mm -hmm. took him down. He put him yeah. on the cross. Right. But mm -hmm. Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection bruised his head. Yeah. And, and it's kind of and interesting. And gave all of us the ability to do that. Right. Every mm -hmm. single one of us can walk our life right. mm -hmm. seated above all the stuff. Right. walking in the victory that he gives us in our spirit so that no matter what happens, we can have that same peace, that same strength, that same joy, and right. we can fulfill what God plans for our life. So we're all going to come to that spot where we're going to have to submit to something. Right. But if we submit to God at that time, even if the you know looks weak, looks silly, looks dumb, looks like a failure, but if we submit to God, mm -hmm. he raises it and gives it back to us, raises that situation in our life and says, now you've got, you've got dominion over it, you've got authority over it. Mm -hmm. What a great message even for addiction. Right. Yeah, yeah, that looked really bad, and yeah, you looked really, you know, and it's, you know, but look, I can raise you. In, right. in, if you mm -hmm. can walk this out in my spirit, mm -hmm. from the inside out, I right. can raise all that right. stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and raise you above it. In, um, so anyways, I just thought that was well, you're a almost thought. Done here, I think. Yeah. So go ahead and close this out. Well, I would like to express how to release that yeah. power yeah. in us, but we'll have to pick up on another but, time. But, but the, he did not, you know, it wasn't a total, it looks like defeat on the cross, but it's the antithesis of defeat. And that's interesting yeah. because the Gentiles did mm -hmm. argue with Paul that that was a defeat to them. And the low moments of how, our how life could we? Like how could God die on a, the lowest mm -hmm. means of death? I mean, yeah. they argued Paul well, was... So, if you follow his letters, that's mm -hmm. one of his arguments sometimes to some of the cultures that he yeah. preached in because mm -hmm. they looked down on the crucifixion. Right. That, that was the lowest of the lowest. Mm -hmm. That was the criminal of the criminal mm -hmm. uh, in the Roman Empire. Yeah. And Jesus died that death. And it was a struggle in Paul's ministry. They had mm -hmm. to learn that, no, that it was because he became sin for us. Mm -hmm. You know, took, yep. you know, what anyway. I mean, there's so much. I mean, we can't do it all in one time. Right. But it's just more than just a, a nice little Easter story, you know. It's, it's you the, know. right, it's the founding of Christianity. Yeah. Right? Or the birth of it, I guess. So we invite you also. We have a Bible study on Thursdays. Right now it's at the Rockingham Library, 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You may have seen the promo, but we invite you to come to that. It's interactive. And um, even if you don't have a Bible, it's fine because we are looking at a, one book in the Bible specifically. One verse each week. But uh, <laughs> we're still in one verse. But um, but um, you know we have Bibles if you need one. And just come as, come if you want to come. And then Sundays we're at ten o'clock, Rockingham, five eighty two Rockingham Road. Right. And um, we're there every Sunday. So. Yeah. God bless. <laughs>